part of the unit that tells me I should do something as well. Okay, so, wow, I'm, in, I'm really interested in this. So okay. let's, let's take a look at my super e. So our method number two, if you have any refrigerant left in the unit and you have no leaks, or you have a capillary tube or orifice type of system, we want to do superheat measurements. Wow, so obviously I'm going to use manufacturer's recommendations, of right? And you're going to show me that chart on the side of the unit a little bit later. So, suction temperature, that's the temperature of the suction line, Correct. and I try and get that as close as possible to the line. And the saturated temperature. Mm -hmm. Where do I get that from? Mm -hmm. Oh, so I have my pressure gauges. In this case, I'm going to look at my saturated temperature mm -hmm. of the suction line. Or if I'm doing my liquid line, it would be here. But I'm going to look at my suction line gauge. And I'm going to, now once I've got that pressure, what do I do? We go to the pressure temperature chart and we get our pressures and we convert it to temperature. Wow, that sounds pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So this is. PT chart, pressure temperature chart, it's kind of important, right? Yeah, it's most important. So, I'm thinking there's, there's probably going to be an app for this, right? Yes, there is. So, now, is the app the only way to go? Not necessarily. We can do the pressure temperature chart. And, and you can just base it on what the manufacturer recommends, right. which you're going to show me on the side of that compressor, or I mean inside the unit, you know, the chart as well, right? Of course. Okay, well, it's, I'm ready. I'm excited. Okay. Let's do this. Here we go. Okay. So, we always want to go to by the manufacturer recommendation. Depending on the outside air temperature, we have our, our temperature readings here and how they coordinate with the suction line temperature and the suction line pressure, and you can plot it out. And right here, it'll tell you exactly how much refrigerant you need. Now, to get the superheat measurement, you need a uh, thermocouple clamp or just a thermocouple, but make sure you have to tape it in, insulate it properly, and it's a phys physical thermometer reading. Or you can just use an app. You put your indoor wet bulb, condenser dry bulb, the line's pressure, and the line's temperature, and then you just calculate. So right here. It tells you how much superheat you have and how much you need, and it will tell you if you need to add charge or remove charge. Wow, that sounds pretty cool. So, I clamped on temperature probe to my suction line, and then I took the gauges, and I converted my suction pressure to temperature, and that actually gave me the superheat that I was supposed to have, and actually even told me to either add refrigerant or remove refrigerant. Exactly. Now, obviously I can't just vent that refrigerant out, right? Okay. i got to recover it again, right? And all these rules. Um, but, so, I can measure maybe the suction line coming out of the evaporator, which would probably be best if I can do that. If I have a thermocouple probe that I might have to you know, depending on which one I have, I might have to insulate it and tape it on. Mm -hmm. So what do these thermocouple probes look like? Well, we have these clamp arms. And this is a standard thermocouple. Wow, that seems kind of funky. I think I like that one better. That one you just clamp it on, right? And you're good to go. Wow, this one I'd have to actually tape on a line and then insulate it and everything? Mm -hmm. Wow, that, that's pretty cool. So. If it has a capillary tube system, it has a orifice type system, then I'm going to have to do a super heat method. That is correct. Hmm. So I can weigh it in, which is the best way. Yes, sir. I can do super heat, which is another way. Obviously, following manufacturer's recommendations as well. If they have a chart, I probably kind of want to look at that as well, right? Okay, now, is there another method? Yes, sir. It's our third method. If you have a TXV system, we use subcooling. How do I know if it's a TXV? Because it has a thermostatic expansion valve, that right? That's correct. Wow. And maybe it has an electronic one or something like that. But it has something, and on a TXV, it actually m controls the superheat now. Yeah. So now I've got to measure subcooling. Yeah. 
Sorry, you didn't tell me about that, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So our third and final method, if you have a CHV system, we use subcooling, which is the liquid line temperature minus the saturated condenser temperature. Well, this is kind of cool too. Mm -hmm. So we did this one where we charged it. I wait, we got a capital A. Now, in the sub point, I've got some sort of THV system. I'm going to physically measure my liquid line temperature. That's probably using that same kind of probe, right? Okay. I really like that clamp on one. Yeah. That makes it really easy, doesn't it? Okay. And if we don't have that, you know, I could use a laser, but that's probably not going to be very accurate. Okay. So we want to actually measure the physical temperature. Um, the saturated condensed refrigerant temperature. I'm going to need some sort of gauges for that, right? Yeah. Just like what we talked about before. So you're going to take the condenser pressure, and how am I going to convert that to temperature? Again, with our temperature. That thing is awesome, man. Amazing. It's going to tell me, you know, what the pressure is at saturation. Correct. And temperature. Pressure and temperature is basically going to tell me boiling points and saturation. Oh, this is really cool stuff. Okay. So, are you ready to explain this to me? Because I'm still kind of fuzzy on it. Okay. So okay. That's how we do. Okay. So let's see what we do. Okay. So we put in our clamp. We clamp it on the liquid line, and we physically measure the temperature. So we got our, we get our app, and we put in the variables. We put in our required subcooling provided by the manufacturer, our liquid line pressure, and our liquid line temperature, and we just click calculate. And right here, it will tell me how much super, super cooling I need and how much super cooling I have, and it will either tell me to add or subtract. Wow, that's, that's some pretty cool stuff. So, now I'm on my liquid line, and obviously I want to get as close to my metering device as I possibly can. This is just an example. We don't actually have a, an expansion valve system here. Just showing you examples. So, um, I go ahead and monitor that temperature. We'll let everything kind of stabilize. Obviously, I wouldn't do it with the doors open, right? Correct. I want to make sure that everything is running the way it's supposed to run. And then I simply take my pressure gauges, take the high side pressure, convert it to temperature using my pressure temperature chart. Okay, and that will tell me what my um, sub point is supposed to be in. Do I just guess on this or? No, we've got uh, manufacturer so information. So if the manufacturer information is on the door, I can go by that, get the installation operation manual, also called the IOM, and that will tell me whether or not um, I have the right amount of sub point for an expansion valve system. Now, that sub point can probably change based on ambience, right? Correct. So, for example, if it's cold outside, it might be less subcooling. If it's hot outside because it's stacked in the condenser, the higher sign needs to know what the manufacturer says. Now, if it has a site class on it, I just don't charge it to clear site class, right? I let it run, let it all stabilize, make sure that I'm at full operating conditions, that I'm you know, operating with the range, the design range of that unit. That is correct. That is pretty cool. So. We went through several things today. Mm -hmm. It was pretty cool. We waited by it. What was that first one? We waited it. We waited it. <laughs> wow. That's, and that's a cool way too. That's yeah. a bad right? Okay, then we did? The capillary two, superheat So we did a superheat method and we found out that we had an app. Right. There's always an app for that, There's right? There's always an app. Uh, and then we also found out that um, I can do this by sub cooling. Correct. Uh, on expansion valve systems. Learned some really cool things that there's lots of different kinds of gauges. Learned something new about wet bulb and dry bulb because on your your meter when you were doing uh, super heat method, it required you to do the uh, wet bulb temperature of the space. So I have my wet bulb meter that you showed me. Wow, this is awesome stuff. So, are we done? We are done. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. On behalf of Tim. My name is Alex. My name is Mohammed. And we'll see you again. We're out.